What's going on guys? Welcome to a chat with Beastly. Today we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation Vita. Two incredible consoles, one failed, and I think one's going to succeed. PlayStation Vita versus the Switch. <laughs> a great idea versus a great idea that was greatly executed, that's my opinion. 2017 has been an interesting year. The Nintendo Switch exploded onto gamers. Microsoft brought out the big guns for the hardware front in an attempt to stifle PlayStation and awesome games are like everywhere you look. Right now, Resident Evil 7 came out this year, Nier Automata came out this year, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, Mario Odyssey, which is so good. Honestly, that list can, it can go on forever. It's been a great year for gamers, but for me, one major standout has been the Nintendo Switch. The Switch released on March 3rd, 2017 to rabid gamers, I was one of them, and promised two very important things, Nintendo's IPs and the idea of a hyper console that works at home on a TV just as well is on the go. To me, that was a huge thing. Early on, I had doubts about whether Nintendo could deliver, and I'll get into that in a minute. But looking at the Switch, playing it, and experiencing it for this amount of time kind of brought me back to the PlayStation Vita. <laughs> a handheld that was released on December 17th, 2011. And I was so excited, I paid extra money to get the early edition bundle so my wife and I could get it a week early. <laughs> Let's just clear the air here. The Vita, for its time, was revolutionary. The thought of console quality experiences in the palm of your hands was an unattainable dream until the Vita released. At least, that's what I thought. It was an awesome, incredible console for its time. Upon release, though, we got PlayStation 3-ish quality games like Uncharted, The Golden Abyss, which, to be honest, was one of the best AAA titles to ever come to the Vita. And then we got a slew of indies that never really got me excited. But I did have hope, because there were rumblings at the time of a Call of Duty and even a Resistance game coming to this portable. Now those games, they came and went, and they were horrible. <laughs> and with them, the lure of the Vita has started to, to die down in me. There have been sparse Vita games that garnered hype and praise, uh, like Killzone Mercenary, Minecraft, Persona 4 Golden, Borderlands 2, and Little Big Planet. And while I bought many of those and played those games and had some good times with them, at the end of the day, I felt duped by Sony and I felt like they had continually released smaller titles and indies, which I have nothing against, but to be totally honest, these experiences are not why I picked up the Vita in the first place. I wanted a place to play AAA experiences on the go. Sony had so much going for their little handheld. It, it was a powerful console, powerful hardware, capable of playing compressed PlayStation 3 style experiences, something that portable playing gamers had wanted for years. A second analog stick. <laughs> Being able to play first person shooters on the go the same way you do with modern consoles was a dream and Sony made it possible and it was finally reality when the Vita came out. Vita also took its accessibility to whole new levels with remote play which is something we hadn't seen before. It would allow gamers on the portable system to stream data and video from the PlayStation 4 console allowing them to in effect play their PS4s on their Vitas. The Vita was one of the best ideas to me. When you add up all the factors, it's hard to imagine a portable console that was capable of so much failing in such spectacular fashion. After the last mishap with Nintendo, the Wii U, I was cautiously optimistic about then codename NX, to be totally honest. After seeing what happened to such an optimistic handheld with so much promise in the Vita, I knew Nintendo would have to do almost everything right. The Switch launched, and as most know, it flew off shelves into the homes around the country. The console launched with undoubtedly one of the greatest, one of the greatest launch titles of all time in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. A game that looks amazing, had huge living world and timeless characters. Never before had gamers seen a game this expansive on a portable. And I, like most, was in awe of the experience. I couldn't believe it. The Switch also supports GPU overclocking when docked, meaning that 
when you're playing the game on a TV, games look better and the experience is overall smoother when it's not. But the jury was still out in my opinion. I knew that Nintendo's game development was better than most and their games usually ship in pristine condition without the need of patches and they always have smooth frame rates. But I wanted to know what games would be coming to the system in the future. That was my big question. As we know, Nintendo has had some real issues working with third-party developers in the past, and this was a big contributing factor to the failure of the Wii U. It was. The thought of playing some big titles from some of today's big third-party developers would be awesome on the Switch, and that was my hope initially. We started seeing trickles, glimpses, and hopes of possible games coming to the Switch, and then it started to happen. We got an awesome port of Doom, which is out now. Skyrim Remaster is coming out in a few days. And Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, is scheduled for an early 2018 release. Along with these incredible releases, because I didn't think it was possible, we also got tons of news on how Nintendo is not repeating the mistakes of their past. They're attracting third parties. They're working to build relationships. These developers include Capcom, Square Enix, Activision, Bethesda, Sega, Atlas, EA, From Software, and more. This is a huge shift from the Nintendo of yesterday, and it's paramount to the success of the Switch that they have third parties. So to me, now we've experienced what the Switch is capable of. Now we know that ports that look and play like more powerful console counterparts play virtually the same on the Switch, and they look fairly similar to the PlayStation and the Xbox versions. Doom is a very good port and really excited to see what they do in the future. So to me, the dream is a reality now. It's been proven that demanding games, modern games, awesome games are now on their way. And from what I'm hearing, developers are frothing at the mouth to get their hands on the Nintendo Switch, to get their games on the Switch. And that should be music to the ears of anybody with a Switch. Not only is this console pumping out Game of the Year contenders like Mario Odyssey, which happens to be my Game of the Year pick, Breath of the Wild is another one. We're sure to see a flow of games that are now coming to the Nintendo console games that are also on Nintendo's competitors. Nintendo will destroy the competition as long as they have dedicated third parties working to put their games on the Switch, as well as having their stellar and frankly unbeatable first party games. We've seen Zelda, Mario Kart, Splatoon, and Mario Odyssey on the Switch, but imagine other games, Metroid, Donkey Kong, uh, Kid Icarus, which wasn't too great on the 3DS, Punch-Out, there's F-Zero, Advance Wars, Pikmin, Golden Sun, Animal Crossing, Smash Brothers, Kirby. These games <laughs> reinvented the way they did The Legend of Zelda on the Switch would be unbelievable. So they've got the first part. I'll say, I'll say in closing, the PlayStation Vita was an amazing piece of hardware that was ahead of its time when released, but it was made by a Sony that was behind the curve uh, when it came to its intentions. The console lacked first and, f first and third party development, it lacked promotion, advertising, and it created a situation where gamers had no reason to play other than indies. The remote play feature was a great idea, but streaming capabilities had so many variables that playing your PlayStation 4 games on the Vita rarely worked, and when it did work, it rarely worked well. The Vita was great, it was a great idea, but it was doomed to die a handheld that had much more potential. On the other hand, the Switch. It brings true console quality gaming to the portable market with visual upgrades while playing on your TV. It has more ways to play than any gaming device I've ever seen with detachable controllers, motion control, the kickstand on the back of the tablet, the variation to the actual controllers themselves. And unlike Sony, Nintendo is full steam behind their consoles, showing tons of support while going in new directions, more lucrative directions. With their courting third-party developers, they've also shown their base that the console is capable of running the latest games, games like Wolfenstein 2, which opens doors for more developers to port their games to the Switch. No matter what you want to play, or how you want to play it, it looks like the Switch has got you covered. If you want to play on a TV, you can do that. If you want to play on a handheld, you can do that. Uh, if you want to play the latest AAA game, 
Well, it's starting to look like more and more of those are going to be on the Nintendo Switch. So I think that's going to happen. Nintendo is the place to be. The Switch is, in my opinion, one of the greatest consoles of all time. And who knows, it could very well go down in history as the greatest one ever made. I'm anxious to hear your thoughts on this topic. Please feel free to sound off in the comments and get a conversation started. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you happen to enjoy the video. And if you'd like to support my channel on Patreon at $1 per month, there is a link in the description. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.